Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on how to hack. And today, here we are at OWSP WebGoat. So this is a vulnerable web application system for us to run our ethical hacking techniques on. So on Open Web Application Security Project, over here, we are on the left side on concurrency. So this is a concurrency issue. So there is a problem with the business logic level, at a business logic level, about how they're updating information into a shopping cart. And this allows hackers to be able to change the value when they are performing transaction onto your shopping cart, especially when they're checking out. So what I can do here is to go ahead and enter, say, for example, the quantity of the shopping cart. So in front of us, we have the shopping cart. So we have the cart item. So we have a hot drive. And I've keyed in over here, the quantity is one, and I can go ahead and click update cart. So right here, all right, so over here, we can see that the cart has been updated. And we have the following information, which is the subtotal. So in this case, we have the subtotal of $169. So when I go to preferences on the browser, I click under network settings and I click under manual proxy configuration. So I go ahead and click OK on that. And right here, I have the Burp Suite Community Edition running. So this will be intercepting our requests from the browser into the web application system. So going back to the browser, okay, so going back to the browser, I can change the value to say two. Right, or, or any values, and I can click Update Cart. And right here, the Burp Suite has now interjected the request, and I can send the request over into Repeater. So going under the Repeater tab, I can now turn on Magnifier so that it is easier for you to see. So I can go under Repeater tab, and we have here a post. So over here, as you can see on the left side, we have the request, and we have the post into the site, and we have the host IP address, and so on and so forth. So right at the bottom, okay, we have the following result. So we have quantity one, okay, and quantity two, three, four, and submit equal to update card. So what can we do here specifically is that I can do and change, for example, the content into 10. And with that following, I can do a right click and I can see under over here, we have the request in browser and I can click on in current browser session. Okay, and fo following here, they have given us a URL link so that we can copy and paste it into a browser. Okay, so we have the payload. So I copy the following. I go into our browser. I open a new tab. Okay, I paste the following result. Okay, and I of course I can hit enter on this. All right, and of course I can click under repeat requests. All right, and Burp Suite over here, I'm going to drop the first input. All right, and I will go ahead and forward the next one. So on the second part over here, we have updated the quantity to 10. So obviously on the subtotal, it is reflecting properly, okay? So we can go back into the Burp Suite Community Edition, all right, and I can go ahead and click Purchase, okay? And I can click Forward, and going back to the shopping cart, I can see over here, that we have the following details. All right, so we have $169, okay, and we have the credit card information and the three-digit access code. So going back to the second tab, okay, right here I can click on Update Card. All right, go ahead and enter Update Card. I click Forward. Okay, and now the card has been updated with 10 quantities. And when I go back to the shopping cart here, I can click Confirm to go ahead with the purchase. All right, and I click Forward on this. And right here, immediately, we can see the following details. We have the price, the quantity, and the total amount charged to your credit card is only $169. However, we have managed to change the quantity to 10 quantities of an item. So why is this happening? This is happening because as the user is going in to the purchase mode, what happened is that the shopping cart got updated in a separate tab to a different quantity. However, what input and information that is being sent over into the payment gateway is only specified on the subtotal that was previously held by the shopping cart. And when the shopping cart has now been updated, it went ahead to perform the transaction. So this is what we call a shopping cart concurrency flaw. So it is very important that when these details are updated into the shopping cart, when the items are in the finalized stage, going into the payment gateway, all these logics has to be verified before those inputs are being sent over true into the payment gateway. 
So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. And we'll like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.